In the fast-changing tech world, chips are a big deal. TSMC, Samsung, and Intel are the main players in this game. And today, in this video, we will look into how they rule the chip market. TSMC might not be a household name, but it makes chips for lots of things, like iPhones and fighter jets. Intel, once a big shot, is facing challenges. This video is going to talk about Samsung, TSMC, and Intel, what they're up to, and what it means for the chip world. Plus, we'll dig into the plans these companies have to stay on top of the fast-changing tech world. If that sounds interesting, let's get right into it. First up, we'll be discussing TSMC. They're not just a famous name, but they're quietly making chips for a bunch of important things. Think iPhones, US fighter jets, and those tap-end processors. Turns out they make a whopping 24% of all the world's chips and over 90% of the super advanced ones that run iPhones, supercomputers, and even stuff on Mars. Heck, we even have product that's landed on the last uh, Mars launch that are taking pictures of Mars. TSMC is from Taiwan, and they're so good at what they do that the whole world kind of relies on them. They're investing a huge $100 billion over three years to make more chips because there's been a shortage. If we zoom in on TSMC's plans, we see that TSMC is bringing its chip-making game to the U.S., specifically Arizona. The combined output of what we're doing is in excess of 12 million wafers a year. They're building a massive $12 billion fabrication plant in the Arizona desert, set to start making chips in 2024. It's a big deal because it'll be the most advanced tech made in the USA. TSMC's roots go back to the mid-80s when a smart guy named Morris Chang from Taiwan decided to focus just on making chips. Back then, big companies like Intel and Texas Instruments did everything from designing to making their chips. When Morris went out to get funding, he went to many named companies and they told him, Morris, your idea won't get off the ground. If you get it off the ground, it can't scale. But Morris had this idea, just focus on making chips and to do it really well. People doubted him, but fast forward to today and TSMC is a giant, making more chips than most others. Back then, Big companies thought they needed their own chip-making factories. But as chips got more complex, building a fab became a massive task. Two years and $10 billion kind of massive. Even Intel fell behind, and they sometimes get TSMC to make their chips too. TSMC found its sweet spot by making chips for companies like Apple, Qualcomm, and Nvidia, letting them handle the designing part. So TSMC listed on the stock exchange in Taiwan in 1994 and then on the New York Stock Exchange in 1997. Over time, they caught up with the other companies making advanced chips. And today, only TSMC and Samsung can make the most advanced 5 nanometer chips. In 2013, Apple chose TSMC to make their chips for iPhones, moving away from Samsung. Now, every iPhone out there has a TSMC chip inside, and even Apple's Macs use TSMC's chips. Now they're not just stopping at the US. TSMC is in a race with Samsung to make the world's first 3 nanometer chips. They're also making larger chips for things like cars and coffee makers. The chip making game is getting more intense, and TSMC is right in the thick of it, making sure we have the chips for our phones, cars, and everything in between. Now let's talk numbers. TSMC's revenue for quarter 4 of 2023 was $2,161.74 billion, which was a decrease of 4.5% compared to the same period in 2022. As of 2024, TSMC's valuation is $661.52 billion, making it the 10th most valuable company in the world. So they're not just making chips, they're making a lot of money too. Now there's a hiccup in this chip-making tail a shortage. Cars are slowing down production, Apple's delaying iPhone orders, and it's all because of the chip shortage. TSMC, being a big player, is raising chip prices by up to 20%, and that might end up affecting how much we pay for gadgets. 
Another challenge is that tech specialists who really know their stuff are mostly in Asia, not the US. TSMC's top engineers are in Taiwan, and to the most cutting edge research is happening there too. To fix this, TSMC is bringing some of their top experts from Taiwan to the US for a few years. They've already sent around 300 new hires from the US to Taiwan for some serious training. This way, the folks in the US get the hang of how things work in TSMC's super advanced fab in Taiwan. So TSMC is facing challenges, but they're not just sitting back. They're tackling water issues, bringing experts to the US, and trying to keep up with their growing demand for chips. The chip-making world is full of twists and turns, and TSMC is navigating through them to keep our gadgets running. Next, let's take a look at another big player, Intel. Back in the day around 1968, Intel was a big deal. They made parts for computers like memory chips and microprocessors, which make computers work smart. But here's the thing. They were the kings of the hill until things got a bit tricky. You see, they were supposed to keep up with Moore's Law, a rule saying chips should get better every two years. But that didn't go as planned. Intel tried to release their new Alder Lake CPUs, but they're not outshining the ones from TSMC and Samsung. In this fast-moving tech world, once you slip off the treadmill, it's hard to get back on. But Intel's got a new boss with a bold plan. The plan is to throw a whopping $20 billion to build two new factories in Arizona. It's a very long time to build the concrete, the chemical delivery, the electrical systems. All of this needs to be perfect for a fab to run for something that's creating lines and dimensions that are 10,000 times smaller than your hair. They're not just making chips for themselves. They're making chips for Amazon, Qualcomm, and others. It's like they're building a chip-making fort to make the U.S. more self-sufficient. And you know what? They're expanding in Ireland and chatting about projects in Italy and Germany. In 1985, they've fired and rehired some big shots, pivoting from memory chips to microprocessors. It's like changing your game plan in the middle of a match. Fast forward to today, Intel selling most of its memory business to a South Korean rival for $9 billion. Now in the chip world, there's this saying, real men have fabs. Back in the day, everyone wanted to make their own chips, but chips got super complicated, like building a rocket complicated. So companies like Apple and Qualcomm decided to let someone else handle the tough job. That someone is TSMC, a foundry business that only makes chips for others. It turns out they're doing pretty darn well, maybe even better than Intel. Intel is getting into the foundry business, making chips not just for themselves, but for Amazon and Qualcomm. People are skeptical if it'll work for Intel, but with the US government cheering them on, who knows? Now let's talk about their revenue. This is infrastructure. In quarter four of 2023, Intel's revenue amounted to approximately 54.2 billion US dollars, which was less as compared to 63.1 billion US dollars for 2022. Intel has a market cap or net worth of $182.48 billion. Intel has factories all over the world, and they're doubling down on capacity. They're even building a massive new factory in Oregon called D1X Mod 3. Making chips is no joke. It takes tons of water and massive tools that cost millions of dollars. The fab is like a super clean space, 10,000 times cleaner than a surgery room. It's where the magic happens to make those tiny, powerful chips. Now, the US government is chipping in with the CHIPS Act, proposing $52 billion to help chip companies make chips in the US. The plan is to boost the US from making only 12% of the world's chips back to a solid 30%. People say it's a good start, but we need way more to turn things around. So what's next for Intel? They're aiming for an 18A chip by 2025, super small and super powerful. The CEO says they'll be the top in chip design and manufacturing. It's a tall order, but they're on a mission to catch up and maybe even lead the pack. Intel's been through a roller coaster ride, but they're not giving up. The chip industry is a wild place, and Intel's making bold moves to stay in the game.
Moving on, let's discuss the South Korean giant Samsung. Back in 1938, Samsung started as a small trading company in Korea. Fast forward to the 80s, and Samsung was a big deal, making advanced DRAM memory. They became significant players in South Korea and globally. Let's talk about Samsung's big plans. In South Korea, they're building a colossal $228 billion cluster with five new fabs, aiming to be a tech powerhouse by 2042. In quarter four of 2023, Samsung's semiconductor revenue stood at 39.9 billion US dollars, which was a reduction from the 63.8 billion US dollars in revenue that the company recorded in 2022. Samsung's market share in the semiconductor industry worldwide was 7.5%, and this chip-making business is responsible for 46% of Samsung's whole revenue. In the US, they're investing $17 billion in Taylor, Texas, aligning with the CHIPS Act to bring chip manufacturing back home. Why Taylor, Texas? Samsung sees the push to bring chip making back to the US, and they want in. Making chips in the US has its challenges. Why? It's at least 20% more expensive to set up and run a new fab in the US. Compared to Asia, labor is cheaper there, supply chains are smoother, and the government hands out more incentives. Water is a big concern, especially in Texas where it gets hot. Samsung's goal is to reuse over 1 billion gallons of water this year in their Austin campus. Electricity is also a challenge, with their Texas fab set to use advanced chip etching machines for the first time in the US. This isn't about raining on the parade, it's about being real. Samsung's not just building fabs, they're navigating through the unique challenges of US chip making. Now in all this chip making game, there's a big competition happening to be the first to make a 3NM chip. The main players in this race are TSMC, Samsung, and now Intel has joined in too. This competition is urgent because everyone in the industry needs to adapt quickly. TSMC is usually the leader in selling them. In 2023, they made a huge amount of money, about $2.16 trillion. Half of that money came from selling 5NM and 7NM chips. The need for better computers has made the chipmaking competition go from 5NM to 3NM. Speaking of chips, TSMC's 3NM process technology is the industry's most advanced semiconductor technology offering the best power, performance, and area PPA, and is a full node advance from its 5NM generation. Companies like Intel, Apple, and Qualcomm have chosen TSMC for their 3NM chips. At the time of recording this video, TMSC is the one leading in the chip manufacturing and technology scene. Samsung, on the other hand, is facing challenges because they don't have many patents for their 3NM process. Samsung Foundry started making 3NM chips a few months earlier than TSMC, but it failed to get big-name clients like AMD, Apple, MediaTek, NVIDIA, and Qualcomm. So at the moment, the latest chip from Samsung, Exynos 2400, uses the 3NM technology, but it's still far behind TMSC. Although Samsung and TMC are the only chip fabrication firms that have been able to develop 3NM chips. However, Intel plans to overtake both firms by 2025 with its 1.8 NM semiconductor chips. Although only time will tell if they will be able to produce this technology. To sum it up, the chip making world is a fast paced arena, and companies like TSMC, Intel, and Samsung are making big moves to stay on top. The race for the first 3NM chip is heating up, with TSMC, Samsung, and Intel competing hard. Time will reveal who wins this tech showdown. If you found this video interesting, don't forget to like and subscribe for more on the ever evolving world of business and tech. Thanks for watching.